Okay, so here's the ECG interpretation sheet. So these are the guidelines. Number one, check calibration and lead placement. I'm trying to make it as brief as possible so that in 20 minutes, we will have sorted out ECG interpretation. So the first thing is that remember to check the calibration, check the identity, you know, check the lead placement. And how will you check lead placement to make sure that it is in order? Number one, in lead two, it should be upright. And in AVR, this PQRS wave that you are seeing on the screen before you should be upside down in AVR. So it should be upside down in AVR and it should upright just the way you are looking at it in lead two. That first will tell you whether you have placed this properly. If it is upright in lead AVR and upside down in lead two, just know that before you start moving any heavy stuff, just know that no. This ECG, the leads were placed wrong. So that's the first thing. The second thing is check the identity. So that you're not moving stuff on the wrong patient. So it can happen. Now you see somebody has an MI and you forgot to check which ECG. Or you're looking at the child's ECG, so an adult ECG. Then um, review the clinical scenario. ECG cannot be reviewed or made sense of without the clinical scenario. What was wrong with the person? Why did the person come? If you came with chest pain, what are you looking for? If you came with hypertension, what are you looking for? So that's something that you must um, review. And then uh, take corresponding clinical action. Whenever you are unsure, seek a second opinion or refer. You know, you can cardio care is here, here for, for that or any other hospital that has um, cardiovascular services. Now remember, a normal ECG does not rule out cardiovascular disease. Check again. So ah, this is normal. Not a no. Check again. So this is what the normal ECG looks like. P, QRS, and T. Now you see that the P is there. What are, there's one wave I want to focus on. The wave I want to focus on is the Q wave. And you can see the Q wave there. The Q wave is the first negative deflection after the P wave. You have to remember the definition. So there are some things I'm telling you now. So um, I can say it's two people have joined us. Before I go any further, let me let you know that you will not learn ECG if you don't have a pen and a paper and you are writing. Everything I say will enter one ear and go. I'm not cursing you. <laughs> I promise you, you will not remember anything by tomorrow morning. You must be writing. So Q wave is the first negative deflection after a P wave. You need to remember that. When the ECG becomes, I'm going to do a lot of ECGs. I'm going to do ECGs together. When the ECG start becoming jaga jaga, I am not sure what you are seeing. This definition I'm telling you is what you will go back to. Is this your book that you are writing that you will use to interpret the ECGs we are going to do today? Then we see the QRS and the ST. Now I want you to also take note of the PR interval. Can you see the PR interval? It starts at the beginning of P wave and it ends at the beginning of the QRS complex. That is how you measure the PR interval. Now, for, there is a rule. There is a rule that you must remember. Intervals, we measure how long. Segments, we check whether it's up or down. Segment, is it up or down? Interval, how, is it long or short? Just remember that. Interval is time. Segment is up or down. So, PR interval, you can see where it starts from. And you can see where it ends at the beginning of QRS. It's important when we start talking about hard blocks. Then you have the segments, PR and ST segments. To determine whether the ST segments 
So the corollary come. So what do you think? A lot of people always say S7 elevation, S7 depression. How will they determine whether this S7 is elevated or depression? Okay. depression? Thank you very much. If before we determine our segment elevation, like we said, when we talk about segments, we are talking of either elevation or depression. But the first question is, what is the baseline? From where are you measuring this, either this elevation or depression? So our baseline or what we call isoelectric line is that line that is joining the T wave and that P wave, which we call the TP line. So you will see that straight line from, you know, if you continue after the T wave, you have another P wave. So that straight line is the isoelectric line. So it's from that line and from what we call a J point, I don't know if you can see the J point there. J point is where the S wave ends and the ST segment starts, where the cursor is. Are you annotated? So that is the J point. So from that J point, you will now be measuring the, either the elevation or depression. Okay, we can see the annotation. That's the J point. From that J point, you will now assess how high in, in, uh, in cases where you have elevation or how low when you have ST segment depression. So always look at that point. That J point is very critical. You are not sure how it is to look for the J point. Another way you can also look, if you are not so sure at that J point, have it with, move one small box after the J point or two small boxes and then from that point determine whether that's how you assess your ST segment. So can you the J point or move one small box after and you can tell. So remember the isoelectric line is what? The TP line. And then you measure it, compare it, compare your ST segment line to the TP line. Okay? The interval you can see, PR interval, you can see the QT interval from the point where QRS starts to the end of T wave. Very good. So let's now go back to our summary. So the first thing that you ask in your summary is reading. Is reading. And there are five questions you must ask yourself. You must write to. Don't say that you are going to get it later so you are not writing. Writing helps you to remember. This is the only way you learn it. Number one, are the RR intervals equal? Number two, is the P wave upright in the two and inverted in the AVR? You remember I talked about at the beginning? What was the whether the leads are placed properly? Number three, are all the P waves similar and normal looking? Or does one look alike, look differently? Then number four and five looks similar. QRS, is it preceded by P wave? And P wave, does it have a QRS after it? It sounds like it sounds like tautology, Abby, but everything is important, I'm telling you. There is no wasted word, I'm telling you. Okay, now if you look, move to the left, now you see you will see or go scroll, you, you see examples. Can you see those waves you are looking at? And you can see the first thing you ask yourself, we said what? The interval is equal. Can you see the R waves on the top one? The intervals are they equal? You can see they are fairly equal, right? Yes. The next thing is that all the P waves, do they look alike? Can you see the P waves? Do they all look alike? That's the next question you ask yourself. The next question you ask yourself is what? Is it upright in the two right and inverted in AVR? Okay, in this example, there's only uh, the two we are looking at whether it's upright or not. Then the next question is that every P wave you are seeing, is there a QRS after it? And every QRS you are seeing, is there a P wave before it? So every P wave. All right, so every P wave. Is there a QRS after it? And every QRS you have seen there period before it. So and sometimes let me add one before you finish. Go ahead. Then is the rate normal? Exactly. So because you can have a normal sinus reading, as at the same time you can have a sinus tachycardia oh, or a sinus bradycardia. Exactly. 
So scroll down, you will see the reading examples, the other on the side. No, the other one. The other one. No, the other one. The other one. The other side. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. So these are examples of abnormal reading. And I'll lump it up. I told you it's a summary sheet. We are doing a crash course in ECG. Normally it takes 90 to 120 minutes for me to teach ECG. But we are on Zoom. I don't want people to start looking out on me and start watching the football match. So we need to <laughs> make it faster. So these are e examples. You're going to have the sheet we we'll made it to you after, but I need you to write. The first example there is you have QRS that is narrow and that is irregular. That is what atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation. And you can see it to the other side of this, I mean, on that other side. Can you see the atrial fibrillation? You can't really see the P wave. So this, this is that question four, that you see a QRS without a P wave. Now, you, besides seeing that, you can see that it is irregular. So is it possible for you to have QRS like this without P wave and it's regular? Yes. For those in the studio, anyone want to get to answer? What would we call that? You have QRS just looking like this. There is no P wave, but it is regular. What kind of reading would we call that? We call that a junctional reading. It is coming from the AV node. It is not coming from the SA node, so there's no P wave. So on that AV node, it comes out, it gives you, and it's coming regularly. Okay, that is a junctional reading. Okay, now, the other possibility is that you can see multiple P waves without a QRS complex. That's what you have in, in atrial flutter. Can you see that atrial flutter one? Can you see the number of P waves? Maybe we can annotate. Did, did you see your cursor? I don't know if you see I'm it. not sure whether you see the cursor actually, but... Um, no, see mouse. You can click mouse. This yes. So oh, now they can see that. Okay. So you can see that the multiple uh, P waves. Can you see the multiple P waves? One, two, three, four. And then before the QRS. That is why that question was there. After every P wave, is there a QRS? Now you can see P wave without QRS. In this case, we call it atrial flutter. You can treat somebody with heart failure, the person will not get better. If you don't recognize this, the person can never get better if you don't treat it. You will be giving this still for not next year. So that is the next something. Now the other question thing we said: Do all the P waves look alike? Now you see this number three, multifocal tachycardia. Can you see the P waves there? Can you see that they don't all look alike? Can you see the first one? The first one there looks yeah. different from the next one, and it looks different from the next one. So you have almost three different forms. What that means is that. Different areas are the ones saying beat, one side of the atrium say beat, and that's how the atrium say beat. So anytime it comes, it gives its own morphology. It gives its own morphology. Do you understand? Um, then this one, because on one during the trap is um, pacemaker. You have exactly this, but the rate is still normal. So we know the normal average between 60 to 100. You have three different P wave morphology, but the rate is normal. That's wandering uh, atrial pacemaker. But once you add that morphology with tachycardia, we we'll call it multifocal. You see why I just see you many things at the same time. And you must remember it. That is why you must write it. Now, the key to this is after you have written it down, we are going to look at this CG's life. We will answer them. When we answer them, you will understand why I say every ECG is simple. If you can see, you can read an ECG. All right. In this other one, you have regular, but it is white, and uh, there are no P waves. You have regular QRS, it is white, and there are no P waves. This is a ventricular tachycardia. You must do something. To... This is life threatening. All right, I think we've talked about a lot of this. Now, we now have different other places where we have hard blocks. And in the hard blocks, what you have is whether uh, a QRS always follows a P wave. So sometimes you have a P wave without a QRS, just like that natural flutter. Now, there are different types. So maybe I'll hand over to Dr. to talk about this. Okay, so here, yeah, what we're looking at is that PR interval. Can you just show us the PR interval again? 
Okay, that red interval from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. And that is just telling us the time it takes for your impulse to get from the uh, atrium, pass through the AV node, and get down to the ventricle. So you are now interested in seeing whether every P wave is followed by a QRS, whether there is increase of that interval or whether you have P wave and with no QRS complex at all. So that tells us the different grade of the blood. So let's look at the picture. So if you look at the first one where they wrote um, Mobit uh, 1, before Mobit 1, let's, let me talk about the first degree AV block. What you have in first degree AV block is the normal PR, that PR interval is just prolonged, longer than normal. Normally, the PR interval is between three to five small square. Or that's ECG, three small square to five. So in first degree AV block, what you have is you have the PR interval longer than those five small boxes. That means you have P wave followed by QRS, P wave followed by QRS, but between the beginning of the P wave and the QRS interval is longer than five small square. The meaning is that it is taking me longer time. I can remember one that the meaning is the husband is coming home, but comes home late. <laughs> it, the husband will definitely come home, but he's coming late. Then for the mobile type one, what we have is the PR interval increasingly becoming longer. So you have P wave, there will be QRS. The next P and the QRS is going to be, the distance between them is going to be longer. The third one is going to be longer. It will continue that way until there will be a P wave and there will be no QRS. So you start P, QRS, the husband comes home 9 p.m. The next one, the husband comes home 11 p.m. The next one, the husband comes home 1 a.m. The fourth one, come the man refused to come home. Uh, yeah, the water. So the wow. thing is just getting longer, longer and longer, longer until it finally drops. Drops. And that's what you are looking at. So that's the first one we are looking at. You see the the cursor in the first one that there is no there, there is no QRS after that P wave that was circled. That's a circle. Okay. Then for the Mobit 2, what you have is the PR interval that is, is constant. Like the first, the type one I said, the PR interval continues to get longer, longer, more delay till there is a drop. But in this one, the PR interval is the same. And suddenly you just see that P wave and there's no QRS. That's the one in the middle. So you see the PR interval is the same until you see a P wave, no QRS interval, then P wave, QRS interval. That's type two. Then in the third degree AV block, the one down totally. Now there is total divorce and separation. Everybody is doing their own. The P wave is doing its own and the Q, uh, the, the QRS is, I mean, the atrium is doing its own. The ventricle is there's no communication, so this one, that's, but that's, that's not the third degree. That's not third degree. That's not third degree. This is not third degree. That's this two mm. to one block. Mm. And what you mean by two to one is that atrial will contract twice before and the ventricle will contract, contract once. once. So you can see there are two P waves. Can you see the two P waves? One, and two. two. Then see the first one and then the second one QRS. before the the QRS. Then, then one, one two, two before the QRS. Can you see that clearly, Abby? This you should have seen when you are assessing reading. This is the first thing we are doing on this. It's just reading. Abby, it's not simple. Not your head now. Make me feel happy. It's simple now. Is it not simple? It's simple. Tell me what is hard here. You can see the P wave. You can see the QRS. You can see that the P wave is upright or is not upright. You can see after P wave there's QRS. And once there's P wave and there's no QRS, now start looking for pattern. Mm -hmm. Is it continuous, multiple P waves and no QRS, or it is occasional, or it was gradually testing before it drops, or the P wave was there and QRS is there, but they are very long apart, very long apart, more than one big box. That is 
more than five small squares. That's the last thing first EPA will draw, and then this other one will draw. Should I pause and take questions? Okay, let's continue. The next thing we can look at is rates. Can click clear? Can see that thing? Okay. So you can look at these rates. And in the rates, all you look at the rate is um, is simply can you see the RR interval on the box next to you? Can you see the RR interval? We simply count the number of big boxes between the RR interval. Period. Is it like simple? Yes, it can be. Five, six, seven, eight. 300 divided in by, by the number of big, box. big boxes that gives you the rates. Really? All right, that is all for rates. If the rates, if the R interval is abnormal, what you can do is find the average. If you have eight here, you have seven here, you have six here, you have five here, find the average and do 300 divided by the average if it's regular. Now the next thing is to do the axis. Can we look at the axis? And it's very simple. You are using lead one, two, and AVF. If lead one is positive and lead two and AVF or lead two and AVF are, are positive, it's normal. Can you see by, by two by two? If lead one is positive and lead two is positive and AVF, we say it's normal. If lead one is positive and lead two and AVF are negative, left axis. Is. Isn't this thing simple? So let me say it again. You are looking at lead one and lead two and AVF, right? Hey. Yeah. Normal. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Normal. Thumbs up, we need one, thumb down, left axis. Thumb down, thumb up, right axis. Both thumb down, indeterminate. Very simple, or extreme axis. What's a right axis? Right axis, negative lead one, positive lead two, or an ABF. And or ABF. Isn't it simple? Let's open one of those ECG cases before we, before we go far. Okay, I hope you are enjoying um, ECG. Um, <laughs> learn it. You can collect two thousand per ECG or something and report ECG. So now look at this ECG we have. What is the reading? You can put your answer in the chat box. Put your answer in the chat box. What is the reading of the ECG we are looking at on the screen now? Remember the five questions? This is why I said it was right. Yes. Those in the studio, remember the five questions? Is, it, is the P wave upright in the two? Is it upright in the two? Correct. Is it upside down in the AV, AVR? Is it upside down in AVR? AVR is the second row on top. Is it upside down? It's upside down. Abby? So that's the first question. The next question. Oh, look at the reading wave. Reading wave. The one at the bottom. Can you see that the two? That what you use for your reading. Are the RR interval equal? Yes, it's equal. I know it's, you're not looking up, up and down, but the interval is equal. All the P waves they look alike. Yes. Yes. After every P wave, is there a QRS? Yes. Is there any QRS but a P wave before it? So what is this? Normal reading. What is the rate? Two, three, 
So three, three hundred divided by three is what? One hundred. This is easy, easy, simple. What are we talking about? It's simple. What are we talking about? What is the axis? Is it one and AVF? Thumbs up. Eh? What is it? Hey, thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Normal. Correct. Great. It's easy, simple. Are we not all agreed now? Yes. All right. Let's go to another ECG. Go to the next slide. Okay. No, go to another one. <laughs> another one. Next. Okay, good. Now, what is the rhythm here? What is the rhythm? What's the rhythm here? Okay, in the two, is the P wave upright and upside down in the AVR? The P wave. The P wave. Huh? Is it upright in two and upside down in AVR? The P wave. You can't see P wave. Are you, are you, There's no P wave. So automatically you know that it's not even sign of It's pretty simple. You will just that you just calm down and follow these steps that we have written down. You will never be wrong. So you write that one first, tell them they are paying 100 naira now. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> now, are all the RR intervals equal? No. What do we say about why we can't have P wave and RR intervals are, are on, on, on equal? Who remembers? Can you switch to that key sheet, sheet again? Mm. When we talk about irregular RR interval and no P wave. P wave. That's a extra fibrillation. So great. So remember we said narrow irregular QRS, absent P wave with narrow irregular QRS, extra fibrillation. Okay? Very, very simple. This is uh, my ECG textbook in two pages. Card. No, 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 we should charge extra for it. Now, if you look at the V1 of this ECG, how we see that V1, V1. there's actually a P wave. Mm. You can see the P waves. There are multiple P waves, so I just can annotate for them. If you really look well, so this is now advanced. So, in, in case you ever come for the advanced course, you can see one P wave there, you can see another P wave there. The thought complex has multiple. You can see, you can see. So, it's not really as if there is no P wave before. You can see the P wave, all that happening just before the QRS. So, you can see there's actually a P wave. So, this will now be a flutter with. It with, with uh, not really a fibrillation, but some people will see say fibrillation. Flutter so fibrillation. you agree with flutter fibrillation. Also agree. Great. ECG made easy. Then the axis before we leave it. The axis, yes. What's the axis? So this is what we have. In, in one is what is one positive? Yes. AVF, is it positive or negative? Yeah. What is that? Left axis. Left axis. This is why it was right. Just keep on using your book as expo. Use it for the next 50 ECGs. You can never forget ECG again. Okay, the last step that you need to learn ECG, catch somebody and teach the person. Whether the person wants to learn or not. Doesn't matter. Just catch your 10 year old son and just start teaching him. <laughs> <laughs> then you finally learn ECG. Okay, great. All right, so let's uh, go back to our this thing. So I, I just did all this one to show you that ECG is, uh, simple. is simple, okay? And uh, it's not hard. The problem I always remember when they taught a lot of ECG is that after they finish doing it, when they now show the real ECG, it just looks like Jamuri. That is what I'm going to be showing you. Now the next is intervals. What did we say about intervals? We are only looking at whether it is long or short. Abi, yes. don't bother yourself getting that thing. A PR interval should not be longer than one big box. And it should not be shorter than three small squares, than half a big box. Very. Ah, excuse me. What do you think? Very simple. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yeah. Very simple. 
Then, yes, just think about not with the shutter that they have half a box. I should not be bigger than okay. one, one, one box. Half to one. Now, we now go to the QRS. The QRS typically should not be longer than 120, which is three small boxes. QRS should not be longer than three small boxes. If it is longer than that, look for these patterns that can tell you whether it's a right bundle branch block or a left bundle branch block. And in the right bundle branch block, what you have, the, the money is called Maru. For those of you who try to go abroad, don't have encouraged to go abroad. I'm not encouraged if I don't go abroad. But you see this in your exam there. Right body brand block or left body brand block. Maru. M in V1 and W in V6. M, right body brand, W, Maru. That's the M. Use the annotation so that you can see. That's the M. And then in this V, it's supposed to be W, but not a real W, Sha. It's just, just a manage of you. So you have Maru. That's, that's, that's the demonic. Okay? Now, if for left bundle branch block, what you have is the opposite. You have, you have um, W in um, V1 and M in V6. The other way. So you have your W in V1 and M in V6. Now it's important to notice a left bundle branch block. Because if someone is coming with a chest pain and left bundle branch block and it's new, that is they don't have left bundle branch block before. That is an MI you're looking at. That person is having a heart attack. That is another way of making the diagnosis of a heart attack. The W is in V1 and the M is in V6. It will look something like this. Mauro and William. W L M William Maru M R B B W Maru. Can you see our small our small rhyme? Okay. This is an international mnemonic. International. If you look above that, you can see that the QR if you can see the the no, intervals, normal intervals. QRS should not be more than half a big box. QT should not be half more than half of the RR interval. And PR should not be more than one big box or less than three small boxes. So, um, PRS should not be more than half of the big box. Yes. So, if you look at this PRS now, that one is more than half a big box. So, yeah. This has almost a one full big box. That is why we now say uh, we have a problem here. And what that simply means is that it's taking longer for the heart to get uh, the impulse, the ventricle to get it uh, depolarized. All right, let's go faster. Let's go faster. PCG, I don't know how I'll teach it in this one hour, but let's see. Then segments up and down. We'll go to the segments. And in the segments, we just recognize up and down. The first segment you can think about is PR. And PR segment typically goes only down. PR depression tells us about pericarditis. Pericarditis. That's the end of PR segment. No more than any other thing. PR interval, when it goes below that yeah. isolated. PR yeah. segment. Yeah. Segment. Once it goes below, not the interval, the segment, sorry. Yeah. When it goes below the isoelectric line, that TP line, you say it's depressed. Now that ST again. Now, the ST segment, this is now is very important. If you don't hear anything, you must hear this one. Because it's, this is where people are coming to have heart attack, you must do an ECG and you must recognize this. The ST segment greater than one small, greater than the one small box in elevation is considered ST segment elevation. However, you must make sure that it must be in at least two contiguous leaves for you to diagnose ischemia or heart attack. What are contiguous leaves? Contiguous leaves are simply two leaves that are looking at the same area. So me and the toilet record now are both looking at this microphone now at this okay. camera. If he says ST7 elevation and I say ST7 depression, it's not, it's, and I say normal, forget about it. Because one of us perhaps our eyes know. But if two of us are looking in the same direction, say there's ST7 elevation, then at the voice of two witnesses, the matter is confirmed. Okay. So now you have to cram these um, contiguous leads. Lateral leads, one 
AVL, V5, V6. And remember that you just need two. If two of them agree, matter is confirmed. You have two witnesses, just like in court. For scepter, V1, V2. Anterior, V3, V4. Inferior, 2, 3, AVF. This one was, if I everything I like on this, on this uh, summary, it was calm. But if you, if you write it and use it to, to read the CG, at least 100, you will know it forever. You will not need to cram it again. Is there another thing that you point out? Mm. The pattern of the ST. Okay, yes, the pattern. Now, sometimes you have a segment elevation. You can see their types. <laughs> If it is concave up, that is, you can sit inside it and it's elevated, calm down. Saddle shape. Saddle shape, that is, somebody can sit. Can you see that one below, concave up? It's smiling. Concave up, you can see that one, concave up. That is, as you can sit inside that saddle. That is typically benign or it could be for pericarditis. Especially if it's widespread in all the needs. That is not even following any segment. Is it V5, is it V6, is it V4, is it V3? It has crossed several areas. Say it's pericarditis. Typically pericarditis or you don't be to V3. Right. Now in stemma, it's convex downwards. You know, like a camel hunchback, frowning. You can see the person frowning their face. Okay? So that is how you look at it. Maybe you should check an ECG that has this. Okay, let's, 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 go, to the, let's go to our ECGs. Yes. So that we can all look at it. Go back. Back. All right. Who can read this ECG? Is there any segment depression or elevation? These are actual live ECGs from Nigerians. These are not from the textbook. This is from Cardio Care yeah. Hospital. We have done over, I think, with, with the Living Hospital Group, we've done over 5,000 or 10,000 ECGs. We are just ready to write, write our book. Yes, what can we see? You can, type in, you can type in the chat box so that we can see what you can, you can, you know. If you just join, just keep on following up, following up, you will get it across along the line. We have 107 people participating from different parts of the country. And then we have some people here in the studio with us. Uh, someone has tried to answer. Someone says... ST STEMI. So somebody says S elevation in the 2, 3, and area. Can we see that really? Okay, so let's look at it. Can we see the actual electric line? Let's, let's, let's draw that line. Can we see the actual electric line from the TP line? That's the actual electric line. Draw it across, 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 right across to it, under that place. Good. So now, can you see that the ST segment is elevated? Now, where, if you find it in lead two, which other places will you look again? Remember the continuous list, check your what you wrote down. Which other leads correspond to lead two? Check what you wrote down. Lead three and AVF. Remember that, remember, two people must agree. So check the three. Is it the same thing there? Is the same thing, Abi? Yes. Let's take AVF. AVF. Three people have agreed, Abi. Yes. So inferior MI. Right? Is it not simple? CG is simple. Ah. Ah. Mm. And for people that listened yesterday, this. Is the class of people that we say we must be careful when we want to give them nitroglycerin or any of the nitrates because of the risk of uh, hypertension. Inferior MI. Great. Now, can you see any SX segment depression? Can you see that in V1? Oh, it's not really depressed. Okay, mm. I, I said it's like that. Mm. That's what I said. Like that. No, same thing. Okay, good. So that, that was the actual electric line that came down. Uh, okay, fine. All right. So let's go back to our. Our our cheat sheets. Okay, now we we'll just move faster because we have never done many CDs, and the jacket are already here. Nice. All right, the chambers. Um, so the main thing I'll just jump at and say, um, if your P wave is bigger than um, that, than two and a half small boxes, 
we will say it's speed. And if it's taller than the same thing, we will say it is right, the right atrium is enlarged. So if it is wide, left atrium is enlarged. If it is tall, right atrium is enlarged. If it is wider than half a big box, left atrium. If it is taller than half a big box, right atrium. You will write it down now. When we go to read this, it, it is what you are writing down that we used to answer, and you will just enjoy the thing. To be so simple, you will angry. If you look at the picture on the, on the left, can you see the picture on the left? That's essentially how, how you see it. That's essentially how you see it. All right, let's go down. Um, so Q wave, a Q wave should be big, and then you have T wave inversion. Remember that T wave inversion can also signify ischemia. Let's let's let's, and that's the end of. The summary of reading an ECG. Cardio care is located in area 11 Abuja, and beyond this, we also treat the MIs with angiography and otherwise the ICU. So let's go to the cases. Let's go to the cases and let's start using our cheat sheet. Now, remember, you already have written it down, so let's start answering. So, next slide, we'll use this one just now. Next slide. Okay, great. So, the first question we said is what is the reading? Yes, what is the reading? Is the P wave upright in the two and inverted in the AVR? Can we look at it? That was can you help me with that uh, mouse, the annotated mouse? Yes, can you see the lead two? Is it upright? You can see it's upright. In AVR, can you see it's inverted? Yeah. So that's fine. Is, are the R interval equal? Ah, no, you have changed the slide. No, the... Oh, sorry, sorry. Apologies, please. Okay, are the R intervals equal? Virtually, they are. Okay? They are equal. Okay, what again? Is there a QRS after every P wave? Look at the reading strip. So in every ECG, you will see that strip at the bottom. That is one long strip for reading. That's how you do it. So is there any, after every P wave, there is a QRS? Yes. After every QR, before every QRS, there is a P wave? So what reading is this? Normal sinus reading. Okay. What is the rate? Count the number of big boxes in between. How many are there? One, two, three, four. 300 divided by four is what? 75. So this is a normal sinus reading with a normal heart rate of 75. Yes, what next do we do? Axis. Axis. What is the axis here? What is lead one? Is it upright or that upside down? Lead one. Upright. 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 AVFR. Upright. upright. What is this? Normal. Normal. One plus one. All right. The next thing we said is what? Intervals. PR interval. Is it normal? Is it, is it more than one big box? Remember that the PR interval is starting from the beginning the of, the of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS. Is it more than one big box? No. no. So, normal PR interval. QT interval. QT should be what normal QT interval. Check your book. What do we say normal QT? It should be less than, less than half, of, half the of the RR. So, let's look at the QT. Can you see that QT? Is that less than half of the RR? Can you see that one that we have highlighted? It's less than not so. So, it's normal QT interval. QRS should be less than half a, half a big box. You can look at the V2 or V3. You can see them. Is it less than half a big box? Yes, virtually. Yes. So next thing we come to segments, Abi. PR segment is the same level as every other one, Abi. Next thing we have ST segment. Is there any ST segment elevation or depression? Remember, you're looking at the J points. Is there anyone? None. Great. So normal. ECG. Sign your name and collect your money. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. Fine. So next ECG, we are going to continue reading ECGs and then uh, we'll be taking questions. So if you have any questions, put them in the chat box. Clear the... All right. So, can we try? But I'll let go. We'll, we'll anchor this one. Yes, can we try? 
let's start from the from the reading. Is this a normal reading? Is this a normal reading? The P wave in the two, is it upright in AVAR? Is it upside down? Yes. Okay. The RR interval, are they equal? Yes. Look at that reading sheet at the bottom. The one at the bottom. Right, the reading sheet at the bottom. You can see that. That was that was just the movement. Just movement. It's artifact. You see the whole line went down. It's just artifact. Somebody moved. Was breathing. Very fast person maybe. The RR interval is normal. Yes. Mm -hmm. The P waves are looking the same. Yes. Uh, what else is there? For the reading, so P, P before every QRS, P QRS. before every QRS and QRS after every P wave. So this is a normal reading. Looking at the rates, is the rates normal? So this is like what, a, what's the what's the rate here? How many boxes in between? The RR interval four. So the one, two, three, four. So 300 so, divided by 4 is what? 75. 75. So, so we know the rate. The rate is fine. So let's look at the axis. Look at lead 1 and look at AVF. Lead 1, is it positive or negative? Positive. The no. major deflection in 1, is it positive or negative? The up one, one way up and the one, one going, going down. down. Which one is more? You see that it's the one negative. going down that is small. So it's negative. It's negative. AVF, who go? Is AVF positive or negative? Positive. So which so, axis is that? Right. That is right. Correct. Axis. Thank you. That's good. You see, we are moving stuff. So, what is there? Let's go to interval now. So the PR interval is it normal in this patient? Yeah. From the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS, is it more than one big box? Yes, I is. Let's make an attempt, yes or no. So it's, it's about the size of what it works. It's about, so, so we'll okay. say it's normal. Then the QT interval, is it more than half of that RR interval? No. I don't think so. So the QT looks normal. Then let's quickly now look at our segments. So, to not to waste our time, let's look at the ST segment. Is the ST segment normal in this patient? Is it elevated? Is it depressed? Is it depressed, yeah. is it depressed? Is it depressed or is it normal? Look at and every lead, every every lead, lead. everything. No, you look at every lead. Is where? depressed where? V2. 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 Now, which are the brothers of V2? What's the brother of V2? Contiguous, please remember. I told you that Optician was crammed. V1. 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 Is it also depressed in V1? Yes. yes. And the C wave is also inverted yes. in that same region. Yes. Where else is it depressed? V3. 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 What is the brother of V3? V4 is, V4 is the brother. So good. So is it V1. depressed in V4 too? Yes. So from V1 to V4. We have ST segment depression. So, what do we call this? Linking it to what we discussed yesterday. So, we have ST segment depression from V1 to V4. So, if you have corresponding presentation in this patient's chest pain and whatever, you can say this patient has an ST, se non ST segment elevated M high involving V1 to V4. That means involving the anterior septal leads. So this can go for an end stemming anterior, uh, anterior septal end stemming. Especially if the patient presents, if the patient presents that, with chest pain that is angina-like. Okay, but there's another thing we we'll look at here, which when I think I lost, I skipped to chin. Right ventricular hypertrophy. Okay, we, we didn't this. talk about average and LVH at all. So you talk about average and LVH. Uh -huh. When you get the slide, you look at it. Yeah. In the right ventricular, right ventricular, just look at V1. If V1 is positive. If R wave in V1 is positive. 
Bang. Right with that, I'm not going to get Or if they offer. And that is why these right hand is. That's why this one is right hand, because the right ventricle is also enlarged. Um, because this picture can also be caused by right ventricular hypertrophy. Especially if there's no pain, nothing, nothing, but this looks extensive just for the right ventricular hypertrophy. But like you said, you will not interpret your ICG in isolation. The ECG, the patient presentation, and you looked at everything exactly. together. If you can see the breathlessness for me now, I would think this is a pulmonary embolism or a chronic pulmonary embolism. Right ventricular hypertrophy, T wave inversion on the right side, you know, right axis deviation, pulmonary mm. hypertension. But if you now have maybe here, the rate is fast, you have tachycardia, you have this right axis deviation, you have this pattern. The first thing, even in presence of chest pain, pulmonary embolism will be a strong consideration. So you can see that is the same ECG picture can be interpreted in different lights. Depending the, on the clinical presentation. That is why the our first thing, remember we say identify, check the case summary. What is wrong with the patient? So somebody just said yeah, ECG, I say, um, doc, take this ECG, report for me. You will just get garbage in, garbage out. We will just report ST7 elevation, ST7 depression. You cannot say anything. But when you now bring the clinical context, that is where you can now say this or that. For posterior infarction, what uh just make it to this one? For posterior infarction, like we talked about yesterday, you are not seeing the direct effect because, except if you have a posterior lead, but you can see the mirror effects in the opposite leads, which are the anterior leads. So you can see something similar to this, but for posterior inf infraction, the R wave is not prominent. You have poor R wave, what we call poor R wave progression. So you can see that the same picture can be uh, interpreted in different ways. That's why one person will look at this ECG say this, another person will say this, but by the time you bring the clinical presentation of the Patient and marry it, you'll be able to say, okay, most likely this is what is happening in this case. Okay, let's go to another, another ECG. You cannot let ECG without any ECGs. There's no shortcuts. So I advise you to, as you go, get ECGs as many. Read them. Um, um, indicate interest to join the WhatsApp group. We'll likely send you to your mail with the short code so that you can join the WhatsApp group if you're interested. And then put on the ECG that you have a problem with one side for you. We will do that for a while, maybe at least two, three months after, and then we are sure that you'll be able to answer. But we expect that you have a reason. Don't ask the same question over and over again. But if we teach you that one, we we'll the next one comes, you'll be able to answer it, and so on and so forth. If you are going to remember ECG for the rest of your life, today, go and report 50 ECGs. Go to any hospital, come to cardio care, we will give ECGs, you report 50. Then find somebody and teach it. You will never need to read, read ECG again for the rest of your life. Just using this simple formula I've taught you. So let's look at this ECG. What's the reading here? Yeah. It's, 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 get, it's getting tougher, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we used to train our nurses. So, I mean, they are reading it, so you guys can do it. Okay, fine. P wave, is it upright in the two? Is it upside down in AVR? Yes. Yes, it is. Good. All the P waves, do they look alike? Look at the reading strip at the bottom. You can see P and QRS. They always look at about the they same height. look at about the same height. P, QRS, P, QRS. They are looking the same. Now, this other one is a QRS wave, but doesn't have a P wave before it. What do we call that kind of QRS wave? Wide, doesn't have a, QRS, a P wave before it. We call that an ectopic. The ventricle by itself decided, or a premature ventricular contraction, or a ventricular extra system. The ventricle by itself That's decided true. to do what it wanted to do. Okay? Yes? Yes, any questions? 
the RR interval are they equal? The RR are they equal? They are equal except for those the big for those PVCs. Are it the premature ventricular contractions? They the ventricle contracted before time. So the so, reading is normal, but you have sinus reading big. with PVCs, right? Sinus reading with PVC. So that's very simple, isn't it? Okay. So the next thing about this is that what is the rate? So the count is the amount of small squares that we have. How many big boxes between the R and interval? One, two, three, four, five, three hundred divided by five. Sixty. Sixty. Heart rate is sixty. What is the axis? Look at the normal. QRS when you are doing those look don't use the abnormal shaped one when you are doing exactly forget that PVC that abnormal shape one forget that one okay so um, in lead one is it positive or negative in lead a AVF is it positive or negative even though it's very small you are seeing there is it positive or negative what is that normal, normal axis Abby one plus one fine um, ST segment everything looks fine right no V5. V5, V6. Has T wave inversion. Can you see the T wave inversion? And the ST segment? Correct. Can you see that? Something like that. So, can you see that? V5 and V6 are, are reporting which wall? Which wall are they looking at? Check your book. Lateral. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you see, it's flowing. That's how you just keep on doing. If you just continue reporting like that, that's how. At the end of the day, you have gotten it forever and ever. All right. So we have lateral wall ischemia, right? Lateral wall reproduction abnormalities. We have a normal sinus reading. We have with ventricular extrasystoles, right? Or PVCs. Is there another problem here? And we know the normal, and we know the heart rate is 60, and we know the axis is normal. Yes, yeah. in the limb leads, there are low voltages in the limb leads. So, for you to say there are low, low voltages, the QRS must be less than one big box. Now, one big yes. box. Can you see that in that whole limb lead, lead one, two, two three, three. AVR, AVR, apart from that PVCs, they are all less than one big box. So, we say you have low voltages. Typically, for that one, you have to do an echo. Okay, we talk about um, uh, LBH, but if you look at the R wave in V5 or V6, and we add it to the X wave in V1 or V2. Okay, also, can you help us show? Okay. So, R wave in V5 or V6. To take the other one. Second. Uh, one, two, three, three, four. Okay, then we'll come to the um, one, one, two, two and a half. If the if you add the two other ones, more than seven, seven big boxes, boxes. we we'll say you have left ventricular hypertrophy. And right ventricular hypertrophy, we already said is what? Once the in V1, the R wave. If you have this, if you have the R, if you have it positive in V1, yeah, positive. in right ventricular hypertrophy. Remember, we talked about it already. Yeah. Is it life simple? Ah, is it is simple? Is that does anybody see doubt? I have believers in the studio, but they are looking at me very cautiously. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. It just, it just reads in the QRS complexes. It's not making it look as if one may not be able to know exactly what, what it is about the QRS complexes. The what? No, the, the QRS complexes. Is it? Sorry, you said that there are no voltage. Yes. In the limit. Yes. Now, but in contrast to what we're having in the yes, in the yes. So when you go and look at the echo, you find what the problem is. Yeah, you have to do the echo. And like we said, and I'm saying during the during the previous lectures, everybody will have potential to have an echo. Everybody. You have an echo. Then with the ectopic bits that we have, once you have abnormality on ECG, you should check. You should do echo to look at the arts. Well, we not say this is. A... You would say that this is a normal ECG. No, this is not, this, this not a normal ECG. Normal sinus reading with PVCs, with same type, not even same type. 
they are multifocal. Can you see the three um, types of the PVCs? They are different. Patterns. Can you see that three of them are different? Yeah, yeah, this one looks different. Yeah, this one looks yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. And this other one looks different. Yeah, yeah. This is called multifocal. So different types. Different places. They are coming from different parts of the, of the ventricle. And sometimes all of them can look alike. We call them unifocal. Now we also say that the heart rate here is 60. We say the normal axis. We say that ST depression in the lateral limbs, slightly indicating lateral limb ischemia, and we say that there are low voltages in the limb limbs. How about sign your name? Crap, put it and drop the mic. <laughs> All right, we have 101 participants online. We have about 10 people in the studio, roughly. Great, so let's go to the next ECG. We're almost out of time, so we'll go to the next ECG. Um, we have done ECG in in 60 minutes. Ah, mm -hmm. this is the fastest I've ever taught an ECG. And I think it's even better. I think I'll give you guys the summary sheet. Well, Dr. Franklin, what do you think? Yeah. This is very fast. Yeah. All right, now <laughs> let's start putting Musa <laughs> Uta. <laughs> All right, reading. Now, this is now time we get to see whether you paid attention to everything we said before. Reading. What's the reading here? What's the rate? What's the rate? Ah, should I put money on this? Audience, can I see the audience? Maybe they are, let's see the chat box. Yes, sorry. Yes, what's the reading of this? Can you put it in the chat box? What's the reading? Yes, somebody said something in the, in the studio here. Someone said the chat box. Correct. So somebody give you expo. Frankly, give you expo. Ah. <laughs> oh, you. I owe you a bottle of water. <laughs> great, great. So what, why did she say the draft flutter? Why did you say the draft flutter? There are multiple P waves before the QRS, have you? Yes. So there is P wave, no QRS, P wave, no QRS, P wave, no QRS. You see, after a while, you don't have to remember those five questions. If you keep on reporting, no questions, once you just see it, you recognize it, you recognize it. But those five questions are needed. When the ECG gets very complex, even me, I go back to that five questions. I ask myself step by step. Only thing is looking, you know, as an ECG, you just sit there. I will, my medical officer will call me. Chief, have you seen the ECG? It's just like, like a, please, sir. I said, what is there? He said, no, everything is just like that. Okay, so thank God for what, sir. So we can see that it has been marked one, two, three, four. If you look at the next one, you can see the ECG is there. I mean, the P waves all coming before the PR. If you don't solve this one, please never get out of that. So we already have atrial flutter, four to one AV block. You understand? The, the AV is blocked. P wave fire in no part. Fire in no part. Four before one we pass, four before one we pass, four before one we pass, four to one AV block, right? Are we all with, with me? If you have questions, please put them in the chat box and we'll answer them immediately afterwards. Or maybe they will have questions related to this ECG, I don't know. Okay, next, um, so what else is here? Um, any other thing, what's the rate here? One, two, three, four, Four, about four and a half, one, two, three, about five. five, five. So 60 RB, approximately 60. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, there is no ST segment depression elevation, right? Maybe two, three, yeah, but so small. Okay, two, three, and AVF, very slightly. Very slightly. Slightly. So you just look at that. Mm -hmm. to, it's not quite significant, mm -hmm. but it's something to look at. No depression, no elevation, right? Any other thing? Is there right ventricular hypertrophy? No. Remember, right ventricular hypertrophy is positive QRS complex with V1. Is there LVH? Look at V2. V2 is two boxes. V5 is three boxes. It makes up what? Five, not to seven, Abi. So, no. All right, great. Next ECG. All right, we have signed our names. ECG is very simple, honestly. Ah. Right. No, let's put that down. Yes, yes. Let's do a beach in the previous one. Huh? Okay. I think, okay. Go back. Let's, let's leave this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Out of time. What out of time? 
We are in injury time now. What, what is time now? Oh, out of time. It's time for the other one. Okay, we'll do this. Two more messages and we'll go. What is the reading here? That's the rate. The rate is 150. 300 divided by 2, right? Yes. 150. Automatically, you know that is way above if a physiological is pathological. Once you get above 140, you're already pathological. So this already is a tachycardia. The next thing you ask yourself is tachycardia, is it narrow complex or wide complex? Is this QRS narrow or wide? It looks narrow. It's less than one half a big box of it. Is there P wave here? Are the, are the QRS equal? I mean, the RR interval, are they equal? Are they equal? Yes. 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 Mm, they are P waves there, but yeah. because of the fast rates, that's why we're not seeing it very well. Well, you can see it's just trust that there are P waves there. The P -waves. This is one of the ones that <laughs> is our own, it's for us. But there are P waves there, so some of them are for us. Shai, you can see that this is a narrow complex tachycardia, narrow QRS complex tachycardia. Okay, and if this patient is unstable, blood pressure is low, you typically have to de What we talk about is BNS. This time now we put it and we must synchronize the QRS with the um, with the shock. So the shock lands at the peak of the QRS, boom, and then it reverts back to a normal rhythm. Okay. Very nice, very simple, very sweet. Great. So this is a narrow complex and I think we can all see that there's nothing to worry about. Let's go to the next. One, I want to put one last one. No, not this one. No, go back, go back, go back. I just want to make sure that we have gotten some particular thing. Back, 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 back. Yeah, all right. Who can read this ECG for us? Read him. I think we're talking about that. And I want to just test again for those in the studio. Yes, what's the reading? What's the reading? What's the problem? The other the problems here. Normal reading, right? P wave is everybody looking at us quietly. They are wondering whether there's a trick. The P wave is it upright in the two? Uh, is it upside down in AVR? Uh, yes, it's upside down. Yes. It's upside down in AVR, right? Exactly. Yes. Correct. The R are they equal? Yes. Great. After every P wave, is there a QRS? Correct, so we already know that. What is the axis? Lead one, correct, axis is normal. Lead one, is it positive? AVF is what? Is it positive? One plus one, I mean, very simple. The next thing is what? Interval. All the intervals look okay. QT is shorter than RR, and PR is not what to a big box. The next thing is um, segment. Any segment, any elevation of depression? And, Elevation where? 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 Remember, there's this catch criteria. Lead two. Lead two. So who are the children of lead two? Who are the other brothers of the two? No. Lead three and AVF. You have to use that. So go back to your book. Lead two, three, and AVF are looking at which part of the heart? Check your book. Check your book. Inferior. So what is here? Say it. Say it. You can do it. Inferior. Inferior. M I. Say it. Don't worry. Nobody will cut your head. Inferior myocardial infarction. Let me just ask your clinic. Don't start saying you have typhoid or whatever. This is an inferior myocardial infarction. If anything, if you leave this place without anything, recognize this segment elevation. It may also happen maybe just V1 and V2. What would that be? What kind of what kind of MI would that be? Septa. If you have it from V1 to V4, what kind of MI would that be? Anteroceptor, anterior, anterior, and septa. If you happen in one and AVL, what kind of MI would that be? Lateral. Great. God bless you. Any questions? So you can close that edition box and let us see any questions from the online audience. If there are questions from the in-house audience, just Click X at the end. Yeah. So click Q and A. Let's take one or two questions. Scroll down. What region of the strip is best to read from? Typically, lead 
Reading lead two is the best script to lead to use your for your reading. Lead two is best to read lead two or read V1 or V2. If you guys want to have a long strip of it, so that's the best to read read for. Okay, um, can I get this in this slide? Okay, yes, I say we'll send you actually the summary sheet that explains that you can just keep in your consulting room or on your phone. Just and then anytime you have an issue, you go through it. Go through it. But if you do not practice before one week, everything we've taught you, You'll you forget. will forget it. By the time we come for ACS next year, we'll be like, ah, it's true. Ah, I know this thing. Oh. Somebody asked, how reliable are automated ECG readings? If when you see it, all reading, you will see confirmed by the physician. Yeah, yeah. So automated ECG readings are not reliable. You should confirm. Not everything that is written by the machine is correct. You have come for this course, so ignore them. Beat your hand on your chest. Say, I'm from ACS. <laughs> sign it in. Cancel it and sign it. If you're not sure, ask for help. Remember, like we said. Mm. Okay, I think we've answered all the questions.